Hey woodworkers. So we're talking about how to cut a haunch tenon for door joinery. So I've already cut this joint here. Um, hopefully you can make this out. I've got a deeper mortise in here. I've got a corresponding tenon situation that has this haunch section on it. Uh, then these things are well fitting. So this is not going to go anywhere. Um, so, in doing that, um, this is the after I need to get to, or from the before now to get to get us all caught up. So, the first thing I've done with material that I'm going to choose to make door frame out of, and this is for door and frame or frame and panel door. Um, I've cut all these down to the same width. Um, the other thing that I've done is cleaned up the inside edges here with a hand plane so there's no mill marks, there's no burning edges from a table saw, there's no anything that's rough. Um, so it's all nice and clean. It's easy for me to tell which is which because the other edges do have some nasty stuff that is very obvious to see when I'm doing the cutting. So I'll look for those. I really, this doesn't bother me at this point because I know I'm going to be cleaning up these doors and trimming them down uh, to fit them into the carcass. So. Leaving this in place is fine. Cleaning it up is just one extra step. So, all right. So material is ready. Uh, the other thing I should say about this, I want this material for most size uh, doors for furniture making to be about three quarters of an inch of thickness. If it's a little bit greater than that, that's fine. But you start running into problems if the thickness is uh, is greater than three quarters if it's a smaller door size um, and we'll talk about that when we get into the fitting but it, it ultimately is going to cause the opposite corner from where the hinges are the inside corner uh, to bind or hit against the carcass so three quarters of an inch will provide us enough material for mounting hinges to as well as the stability to create for a panel size if it's less than that it should be a much smaller door so all right so getting rid of this um, saw blade. The saw blade that I prefer to use is a um, uh, a flat tooth grind single blade here. I I've used dado blades before. I just feel like um, the process I'm going to show you this is much faster, and it's so much more of a time consumer to go and swap out this blade for a dado, especially if I'm doing one or two doors. Uh, if I've got a bunch of doors, then yeah, maybe that makes more sense. But all of this is predicated on um, the expedition or, or the speed by which you can get these things cut. So, single blade here, again, flat tooth grind means that the tips of these blades are going to function very much like a dado stack well. So the inside of that groove is going to be flat. Uh, if this were a different cut, uh, an alternating tooth grind or an ATG, or worse yet, a triple tooth grind or uh, tri triple chip TCG, um, uh, then those start to wreak all kinds of havoc for for this view right here. With the flat tooth grinds, it's going to line up for the haunch into this, this uh, joint. If you have other material removed here, different geometry, based on different blades, that creates a problem. So, for me, I like this one. It's not a deal breaker if you don't have a flat tooth grind, but something to consider. So, uh, okay, and then the last piece that I need to have on hand is <clears throat> in making the corresponding mortise for this joint. Uh, there's a couple different ways of doing it. Uh, drill press, you can use horizontal mortisers, you can use multi routers, you can use even a uh, handheld router jig for mortising. But um, I have access to a hollow chisel mortiser, which is going to make my life a lot easier for doing this. So what I need to do, get rid of the auger bit inside, and I need to gauge the dimension of this, this um, chisel bit that um, works on the hollow chisel mortiser. Um, I need this one. The size of this is going to be relevant to the thickness of the door material. So if I have... The door material is three quarters of an inch. General rule of thumb for making these grooves is that we're going to divide this area into thirds. So uh, three quarters of an inch 
if I divide that into thirds, quarter, 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 that means I need a quarter inch um, hollow chisel uh, mortising bit. So that's what I'm going to do. Um, if I go any thicker than this, so 5 sixteenths would be the next step, which probably is okay in a bind. 3 eighths of an inch is problematic because it's just so much bit in this material uh, and you're going to leave only a tiny little wafer on the outside and inside of the door so it, it starts to become problematic and they really don't make any thinner um, hollow chisel mortising bits than this so quarter inch kind of makes sense so I'm going to hang on to this I'm going to leave it here I don't propose leaving things on your fence but for what it is we're doing I need to have this handy So the first thing that I've done is make sure the blade is square and then I've raised the, the blade up to the, the final height. And for that height I'm going to make this about a quarter, I'm sorry, uh, about a half of an inch tall. And that will give me plenty of space to fit a door panel into and that haunch joinery that we talked about. A half inch is kind of an easy number so that's what I'm going to go for. If it's plus or minus I'll just make the adjustment in the ten inside. Okay. So I have this uh, with the process of a single blade, this conversation gets much, much simpler. Um, what I want to do is make sure that this blade is going to cut dead center of my material. If I were going to use a dado blade, I would have to measure this out and calculate and make sure that everything is right on the money. Um, so uh, for this, this is the second reason why I prefer using a single blade for this. Okay, so I've just lined this up, I've eyeballed or sighted down here. I'm trying to make sure that it's close to center, but maybe just a little bit off center. And I'll show you why that makes sense here in a second. All right, here we go. Once I ran this through the blade, flipping this around now, I'm automatically making a symmetrical groove inside of this material. Again, I didn't do any measuring, I just kind of sided it and, and it looked good. So now, the only thing that I want to do is make sure that I'm not making a groove larger than the width of this cutter, which I'm not. So here, or from here, I want to make an adjustment. to go a little bit wider. So I'll do that, do a test cut all the way through. close but it's still a little fat so Because I'm getting close, uh, actually works pretty well. Because I'm getting close, I want to do a test fit here. So my cutter, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm doing an unsafe practice, which I'm not proud of, but I do want to keep the, the camera tight on this blade, so I'm trying to bring this material into focus. Uh, but I, I typically wouldn't do this. I would be looking at this well away from that blade. Uh, but Having said that, so I think that this fits pretty well. It's probably a little bit looser than I was hoping for, but I can definitely adjust it now. 
and you'll notice that on that last cut, so let me back up. The first cut after the adjustment, I went all the way through, and then I flipped this around, did a little uh, little cut, and then pull it straight back, and that is going to give me a true sense of where this dimension is at. And so, yeah, it feels pretty nice actually. Yeah. All right, I'm going to try just a little bit tighter. So. That said, what I need to do is pull this back a bit and see how we went. Um, once I've made this cut, I always need to keep in mind that once I've done this cut and I'm flipping it around, whatever adjustment I've made is going to be amplified uh, by a factor of two, right? So I, I need to think about not just adjusting one small piece, and because I want this groove to be as close to center as possible, um, in fact, it'll be dead center in this method. I just want to make sure that I don't cheat it one side or the other. So this is where I want. kind of right where I want it to be, which is which is perfect. Uh, unfortunately, since I've already made a cut all the way through the length of this, um, then I need to grab another board and double check to make sure that I'm, I'm where I want to be with those other two pieces. This one is going to now become the rails of my door, so the horizontal pieces, uh, because the panel will still slide top and bottom, but if I were to keep this as a style of the door frame, um, when I fit my mortise, there's going to be room outside of the mortise where this groove is, and I don't want the slop to be in those areas. I, if there is going to be any slop, and we're talking about a small amount of slop here, I want that to be on the rail pieces horizontally. So, alright, so let me try do this one more time. Hand plane edge facing down, I'm going to go through the cut. And See how we did. test piece as I was going. And I, I'm just really happy with where this is at. Uh, I can feel some gentle resistance all the way through without having to force it, but I would say this is a perfect dimension for uh, matching a mortise with uh, with the mortiser. So, uh, I will run the last board all the way through at this setting without adjusting the fence, without adjusting the height, and then I'll have all of the frame pieces for the door. Um, one thing that I want to do address, which I probably should have uh, prior to cutting these things, is there was a small piece of safety that they threw out here, which you probably all were noticing. And I, I don't think that's wrong if your spidey senses are going off thinking about how close you are to the spinning blade and the end of this board, and that's healthy. Um, I've been doing this long enough to have a presence of mind about where that, that blade is. What I was doing, which you probably couldn't see when I want to draw attention to, is I didn't have all of the pressure on this board with my fingers and my thumb touching here and here. Uh, if I did that, any slipping, that would have been problematic. What I was doing with these three, th uh, three fingers, which you might not have seen, is I was hugging those on the inside edge of this fence. Those were keeping my the rest of my hand from dropping down. So it's very easy for me to maintain this trajectory with this board so long as my thumb is just holding the very top corner of this I'm holding here as well. Uh, having said all of that, uh, it's much safer to use a push stick. And there's no good reason why I didn't. But a push stick will definitely keep you in where you want to be and then keep your hands away from, from the blade. So 
Um, yeah, safety first. I probably should have done that. All right, let me cut this last one here. I also want to make a mark on this one. This will be rail, rail, and then that way I won't confuse the two. Okay, I'm going to run the southern groove on this last piece, and then we'll talk about joinery.